Hello, I just thought I'd do a quick roundup of 2024 in the motor industry. Now, as a retired car dealer, used electric vehicle dealer, I've got some thoughts because there's lots of YouTubers that uh, talk about how EVs are dragging down the motor industry. It's going to be the end of civilization as we know it, and we're all being conned, etc. etc. You know who those YouTubers are. And they get lots of clicks and lots of views and, you know, power to their arm if that's how they want to earn a living. Fantastic. But I just thought I'd give you my views on my thoughts on the current situation in 2024. Now, the biggest thing I get comments on when I do a YouTube video from a trade auction or someone like Shoreham Auctions where you can go as well and bid in the hall um, is depreciation. It's an ongoing chestnut. So just to say it once and for all, most of the cars on the road you see today are from funders. What do I mean by that? Well, leasing companies, car manufacturers, the most popular way of financing a brand new car is through a business contract hire or a personal contract hire or HP. But uh, it makes a lot of business sense to lease a vehicle. You don't own it, you just pay for the privilege of having a brand new car and you're basically keeping tally with the depreciation on that unit at the end of three years you hand it back you still lost the same amount of money as you would if you'd have bought the car but you have not shackled with that big massive lump of metal that you've invested thousands in someone else has taken that risk so that's why i like personal contract hire and that's what i did with my key e nero and yes i have gone and bought it but my situation in life being retired is different so i financially it was just a good move for me to purchase it um, I've covered this in quite a few videos. Basically, with me doing a personal contract hire on my Kia e Nero when it was brand new, and when I bought it after three years, I saved £10,000. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to watch that video. Now, just to say, these funders do not pay manufacturers' recommended retail price. So, you might see a printed advertised figure for, say, the Kia e Nero. £39,950, I think it was, when it was brand new back in 2021. Now, I leased this off Arvel, a funder. They didn't pay £39,950. I know this for a fact because I've worked within the leasing industry. I'm now retired. And I know most manufacturers, initially when the car's at its run-out period, it's about to replace by another model, as the old shape Key Nero was when I leased mine, will get 10, 15, sometimes 20%, sometimes 30% off list because they're a big organisation. They can go to the likes of Kia, Ford, Hyundai and say, look, you know, how much for one Kia e Nero? And they'll go, well, it's this much. Well, how much 50? Well, how much if I put my name down as Mr. Kia for 5,000 Kia e Neros? What discount are you going to get me? And of course, the manufacturer's got that guarantee. It's all sort of signed and sealed in their um, uh, financial agreements, their contracts. And they are then bound to supply them at that price. That then gives the funder some leeway to play with when doing out leasing figures. And obviously, they want to turn a profit at the end of the lease term. Now, back in 2021, for them financially, it was, it was a good gamble because, you know, EVs were in short supply because of COVID and the silicon chip shortage and other part shortages. So we went through a period of time when used electric vehicles were actually more to buy at auction than a brand new one because you couldn't get a brand new one because of de delivery and supply issues and timings. So used ones were going for more. And of course, everyone, general public was like, oh my word, going to get a bit of this. I can buy a car, <laughs> run it for six months and sell it out to profit. That was extremely unusual period of time within the motor industry. Covid finished, supply, uh, uh, supply processes improved, timings dropped, cost came down. So then we arrived at the, the, the point where basically there was a glut of electric vehicles. So the price started to drop for the funders. So it's been this mishmash this sort of big financial soup of uncertainty within the car industry over the last few years so just bear in mind that as as has happened for the last hundred plus years 
vehicles of any fuel type will depreciate. They're not like bricks and mortar. They're the worst things to invest in. They are tools that wear out and will eventually end up on the scrap heap. So just get it out of your heads, folks, as most of my viewers will know. Buying any vehicle is not a financial investment. Never has been. It was very briefly in COVID, but it, it won't do moving forward. Now, the other thing that's a hot topic in the news is this Z ZEV, the Zero Emission Vehicle Mandate. Basically, I'll put a graph up now. It's showing that uh, if manufacturers don't hit 22% of their proportion of their sales um, targets in 2024, then they'll hit fines. And that percentage goes right up to 2035 when 100% of their electric vehicles, uh, of their vehicles have got to be electric. And if they don't, they're going to pay a hefty fine of £15,000 per vehicle. So there is this pressure in the UK uh, from the governments. Uh, whatever government is in power, it looks like this mandate is going to stay in place. And it's to encourage them to keep a bit of a stick rather than a carrot to make the switch to all electric for obviously for climate reasons so your internal combustion engine manufacturers they've got their back up against the wall they really have their legacy like Ford for instance made cars for over 100 years they've made their own gearboxes and engines and exhausts and alternators and all the paraphernalia with an internal combustion engine and immediately they've been asked to make the switch to electric vehicles they can't do that overnight they're like drug addicts. They're just hooked on internal combustion engines and the whole technology that goes along with it. Servicing, parts, distribution, even down to the dealers earning more out of an internal combustion engine on servicing than they do out of electric vehicles. So there's this massive transition taking place and internal combustion engine manufacturers, ICE manufacturers, are finding it tough. They're having a really tough time to wean themselves off fossil fuel engine vehicles to pure electric. There's more profit in fossil fuel engines and servicing. There's more profit than there is in electric vehicles. So they're sort of, yeah, they're stuck in the middle. Also, just to mention, talking about Ford, um, I did a recent video about electric van sales and a number of comments were talking about some Ford Transits, all electric, that went through a sale. Uh, brand new, there were £50,000, crazy amount of money for an electric van, whereas the, the diesel version was probably, I don't know, 25 or 30. It's a massive hike. Why? It's not going to cost them that much more to make. And it, it afford trying to push van drivers, buyers towards diesel because it's a cheaper option just to maintain their addiction to uh, diesel and fossil fuel servicing and parts etc etc um, I don't know I'm not into conspiracy theories but it just seems amazing that a, a uh, electric powered Ford Transit costs so much more to produce than a fossil fuel version I don't know I don't know I haven't got access to their spreadsheets but suffice to say when these appear at auction they didn't even sell at £20,000 so everyone rushed to the comments, all these EV haters. There you go. In 12 months, a Ford Transit's lost 30 grand. They're just ridiculous. Well, just bear in mind, did it really cost £50,000 in the first place? Did Ford want your uh, fleet buyer of vans to turn, into, to turn to electric? So again, it's this crossover point that manufacturers are really struggling with. Now take another car manufacturer, Tesla. Now, leaving out the politics and Elon Musk, uh, there's thousands of people at Tesla that do a lot of the development work and are doing an amazing job of shaking up the car industry. So just have a look at Tesla's profit margins. This was taken from last year. So as you can see from the graph, Tesla got 25% gross margin on every car they produce as an average, uh, compared to Honda at 20% nearly, uh, Toyota at 17 and lastly Ford at 14%. So is Tesla's margin being a good quarter of the value of the car? 
they've got massive room to manoeuvre when it comes to price reductions and sales and one-off offers to stimulate selling their product. Um, Tesco's, Sainsbury's might do the same with tins of beans. One week it's on special offer. Buy one, you know, buy one, get two free. They will slash the cost because they've got so much profit margin in that tin of beans to stimulate interest and to stimulate sales. And Tesla are no different. So at 25% margin, overnight, uh, a while ago, Elon or Tesla slashed 20% off the price of Model 3, Model Y, Model S, Model X. And overnight, yes, used values of those models at Tesla took a massive drop. Um, but that also put pressure on the other car manufacturers because all of a sudden, 20% off the list price or something was a massive drop. Um, interestingly, Tesla, as far as I know, do not offer discounts to funders and leasing companies. So there's there's another story. What you what funders have to pay for Tesla is what you actually have to pay. So Tesla are sort of really not only controlling the EV market, but the used market as well. And also the internal combustion engine manufacturers are having to sit up and take notice of Tesla and Mr. Musk. Now that's his business plan. And as a disruptor, he is succeeding in disrupting. So what does this mean for us as individual car buyers, particularly if you're into electric vehicles? Well, at auction, yeah, they are a lot cheaper than they were, but that's great. You know, I don't want to pay list for something. I want something at the best possible lowest price. You see, we've also gone from people moaning that electric vehicles cost too much, and then when they are reachable and affordable, people suddenly moan about depreciation being terrible and they're a waste of money. You can't have it both ways, folks. But at this moment in time, and I'm saying this as a retired car dealer, I don't deal anymore whatsoever. Now is a good time to buy an electric vehicle. Prices are still very, very reasonable and you're getting great tech. Uh, now, if you don't want to, you know, get into a Tesla for whatever reason, that's fine. But consider the Kia product and Hyundai, particularly the Kia. As you know, I'm a fan of the Kia e-Nero. Seven year warranty, folks. So after three years, you buy one at the X lease at three years, you've got four years bumper to bumper warranty on a Kia e-Nero. So there you go. That's just my overview of 2024. I think 2025 is gonna be just as turbulent. But if you're thinking about an EV, now is a good time to get one, it really is. And don't worry about the headline price. Don't worry about the original recommended retail price. That's not what a funder has paid in the first place. Anyway, bit of a rant. Thanks for watching. Appreciate all those people that have watched me over the last 12 months. More content to come in 2025. I'm going to keep up doing the regular car auction videos, uh, particularly from Shoreham. Uh, great people to deal with. And uh, I'm shortly to go on a long range drive to Spain in my key e Nero. So if you're interested in seeing me and Mrs. P and Monty the dog uh, struggling to charge in the middle of nowhere, then tune in. Thanks for watching. See you soon.